Welcome back guys. Today I want to show you how to draw a cuttable or machinable file based off of a photograph. So before you get settled in, make sure to hit that subscribe and like button and we'll see if we can't get you cutting sparks. So we're going to show you a really cool function that Fusion 360 has called the canvas function. And what this allows us to do is turn a average photograph that you can take up with your cell phone or camera into a cuttable or machinable drawing with some pretty good accuracy. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take a photograph of whatever it is that you want to cut out. And the best thing to do is make sure it's on a contrasting background. I had the customer lay it down on a white piece of paper to do that. And you want to take that photo as square on as possible. Now, the great thing about this too is the customer did this and sent it to me. So this customer is in a different county. Now this really op opens up some opportunities for you. It is not foolproof, but it allows you to not have to go to the customer's house and take measurements in every case. Be able to do a lot of your drawing work from right off your couch with your family instead of having to go out in the field as much. So let's get started. We'll show you how this works. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that photograph is in a place where you can find it. So I always like to make a file right on my desktop that's for pictures like this. So we can see that our proper photo is right there in that file. So we know where that's at. Next thing we're going to want to do is open up Fusion 360. And for the linear systems, we want to make sure that our axes are with the z-axis pointing towards us, our y-axis in the north-south, and our x in the east-west orientation. So just like this with the cube facing frontwards. Next thing we're going to want to do is go over to our left upper side over here and hit create sketch. Double click on that and then go down to your plane and double click on your plane and this will open up your sketch. You can see over on your right side that your sketch template is here. You can have that closed up though just so it's out of the way. Next thing we're going to want to do is go up to our upper right hand side to the insert drop down and we're going to click on that and scroll down to the canvas function. Now we're going to double click on our canvas function and this is going to bring up this window here and we want to go on the lower left hand side to this insert from my computer. This is going to allow you to bring that file in from your desktop. So we're going to click on that and then we're going to scroll up. I'm going to find my desktop, click on that and then here's my pictures file. So we'll select the picture of this gasket that we had here. Now the photo is over here on the right side or the drop down for the photo I should say. The next thing that it wants you to do is to select a face and what that basically means is just select this plane. So you want to go over to what this is called the, your origin of your drawing and you can see that change color and we want to double click on that and there is our photo right there in the drop down. Now you want to come over, you don't want to select any values in this yet and we are going to come over and select the OK button. So we have our photo sitting here and we can scroll into it. Now it's kind of an opaque color so this is going to allow us to draw over top of it. So the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that this photograph is to scale so we have an accurate representation of what we're drawing over. So how we're going to do that is we're going to go into our upper left hand corner and we're going to hit the arrow drop down for our canvas and that'll drop down and this little window right here is going to be our sketch so we're going to right click on that and scroll down to this window to the calibrate. Now I inquired with the customer and they said that the small holes are 3 8 of an inch in diameter. So we're going to zoom into our 3 8 of an inch hole and we're going to take our cursor here. You can see the little X, it's kind of hard to see. And we're going to try to hit as close to we can on the edge of that hole and click it once. You can see it left a marker there. And then we're going to drop down to the opposing side of that hole and click again. Now currently it shows us what our scale is and right now that hole is 70 thousandths which is way too small. So we are going to input the correct diameter of that hole. So 3 eighths of an inch equals 0.375 thousandths. So 0.375 and hit the enter. Now it made it much bigger. So we're going to scroll out and now our drawing should be to scale. A quick way to confirm this is we can 
start to draw over top of it. So we're gonna make a circle. So the quick key for your circle is the C key. So you can hit the C key. And then I'm gonna zoom in on this guy. And I'm gonna to try to guess the center of that circle, click it, and then draw it out. And I'm gonna input 3 eighths of an inch. So 0.375, click, and there you go. So you can see that that circle is pretty close to the diameter. So I think we're pretty accurate there and we can continue. So obviously you have your canvas here and we can keep on drawing over it. So I'm gonna hit circle input again. I'm gonna come over to this guy and I'm going to make another 3 8 circle because I know that this hole is 3 8 an inch. So 0.375, enter. And there we go. Now we can just use the rest of it to work off of. So we can take our circle again, hit C for a quick, go into the center, and we're gonna drag this out until it hits our outline right there. There we go, that's pretty close. So we're gonna enter our circle in here. And let's, I'm gonna see if I can kind of construct what's broken out of this as well. Um, there's no sense drawing a broken thing here. So we're gonna take, and I'm gonna assume that this is a 3 8 of an inch circle here as well. There we go, now we have all of our main components drawn out. So now I'm gonna go and try to match this radius here. So I'm gonna hit my C for circle again and bring out a larger circle and kinda try to match that lower radius right there, which I like that. And then we're gonna come over here and hit a circle here and try to match this radius until it meets up there with the edge of that upper right hand part. So that's pretty close right in there. Now I think we can hit L for our quick key to make a line. And we're going to come up here, click that, drag across till we get straight. You can see the indicator right there till we're straight across and input that line. And then I'm going to take, go from up here at our bend with another line. We're going to draw down until we intersect with that circle again and input that line and so on and so forth. So watch for a second as we get this all constructed. Okay, so we got everything done but these last two things, and I want to show you a quick another function here. It is a three-point arc that's super useful in drawing over things like this. And it's going to be in our upper left-hand corner in the Create drop-down. And we're going to go to Arc and hit three-point arc. And what we can do here is we can click on two points that we are intersecting between there and there. And then once those two are established, you can kind of have this little guy to drag around and just kind of make that arc whatever you want it to be there. So this doesn't have to be right on because obviously this gasket's kind of tattered. So that worked for that arc there. And I'm gonna make this just one continuous arc right here as well. So we're gonna come up here, drop that and sweep that into there. So it's a nice clean line. So now that we've got everything drawn out, we're gonna go through and clean up these lines that we don't want. So we're gonna hit the T key which is our quick key for trim function or your, the erase function. So hit your T and then go over until it's highlighted and click on it and just erase all these other lines that we are not gonna use. So these were just kind of build lines. Go through and get those erased. And looky here, we, so we're gonna, we're gonna cancel out of our trim function now that we're done with it. And looky here, we have a sketch over this gasket that we've drawn up. So the last thing we want to do before we uh, start writing a toolpath on this guy is you definitely want to extrude it. It'll make writing your toolpath for for laying your system so much easier. And so right click on that, hit press pull. We're going to cut this out a quarter inch. So this is 0.25 is the values we're going to put in there. Enter. 
and we have our part so you can see it right there and then you can come over here to your left side and hit this eyeball and get rid of the canvas and just look at the part that you've got so so thanks for watching guys hopefully this is helpful I've been able to use this in several applications one important thing to note is your accuracy is going to depend on your photograph so what I mean by that is when you take a photograph you are going to get a forced perspective so the closer you are able to be to that part and the straighter on the less that perspective is going to be forced so it's going to give you a lot more accurate representation so for example that gasket he was able to get really close in there and we were able to get within like a 32nd of an inch on those maybe even a little tighter whereas i've used this function for drawing up an axle truss and i could get behind the vehicle squat down and take a photo of that axle and then import it in and draw the entire truss based off that photo around it and i didn't have to sit there and measure it i could just draw right around it but being so i had to be further back to be able to take that photograph I had more of a forced perspective and then my tolerances were more like within an eighth of an inch versus a sixteenth of an inch or less. So take that into account when you are taking your photographs. So hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please leave a like and subscribe for more videos down the road. Make sure to leave a comment if there is anything that you are having trouble with and I'll do my best to answer those questions and maybe put a video out for it. So take care guys and go build something.